while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What does it mean with that statement? While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us in Romans 5 verse 8. You see, someone who is willing to sacrifice his own life to save another person is considered a hero. But who would be ready to die for an enemy? Jesus Christ proved himself to be the ultimate hero by dying to save his enemies. The Bible told us in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 6 to 8, For while you are still weak, or while you are yet sinners, while you are still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, through, uh, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before a person receives salvation in Jesus, he is a sinner and an enemy of God. The, the, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 10, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And also James 4 4 says, You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So as, uh, the word sinner means one who falls short of God's standard or misses the target. And instead of uh, loving God as a creator and father, the sinner rebels against him. With a sinful nature, the ungodly person is hostile towards God. Romans 8 verse 7 tells us, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The Apostle Paul paints a dreadful picture saying that the ungodly are utterly powerless to help themselves. And uh, some versions of the Bible say that while we were still weak is rendered. Basically, when we were still utterly helpless, when we could not help ourselves, when we were still powerless, Friends, as sinners, we are like prisoners bound in chains, strapped to the guillotine, or the, to the guillotine, and uh, guilty as charged. We were God's enemies, about to be put to death, when Jesus Christ steps, uh, stepped in to die in our place. By this act of sending His Son to die for us, God proved how much He loved us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Many people miss the truth implied by the fact that uh, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And the chronology is important. Christ did not wait for us to clean up our act. He sacrificed himself while we were still actively opposed to him. Salvation does not uh, depend on our meeting God halfway, keeping the commandments or trying to be as good as we can. No. God completed the work of our salvation when we were in a state of uh, open rebellion against him. That's grace. And in Romans chapter 5, Paul is teaching the Roman believers how to endure through suffering. He encourages them to rejoice in suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Romans 5, 3 to 4. And suffering contributes to spiritual growth, which leads uh, to Christian maturity. In the end, suffering allows believers to share in Christ's glory. Romans 8 verse 17 And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And also First Peter 4.12 We can read downwards, it says, Beloved, think not strange concerning the fiery trial which is uh, to try you as though some strange thing happened to you but rejoice in as much as your partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy but how does suffering produce hope Paul explains this hope he says and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love, Romans 5.5. 5. 
And the ultimate foundation of our Christian hope is the unwavering love of God. Our hope will never disappoint us no matter what we endure because we know that God loves us and he will never let us down. His perfect love never gives up on us. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 7, it says, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And because of his steadfast love, while we were still sinners, sworn adversaries of God, Christ died for us. And the Apostle John said something similar. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. 1 John 3.16 It says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And the essence of God's love is apprehended in his giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. So love is shown by giving. Love is not shown by taking. Elsewhere, John says, This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. 1 John 4.10 And Paul's also, Paul also affirms that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Let me read for you. He says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The love of God in Jesus Christ is unprecedented. No other love has ever been more costly to its giver and less deserving in its recipient. When God the Father gave his son Jesus to die for us while we were still sinners, he gave everything, his own self, to to rescue those who deserved nothing but judgment from him. In giving his son, God gave himself the costliest gift of all. He paid the supreme price so that we might receive the greatest love. Are you willing to receive that love? And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, to subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need uh, step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, kithmuoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.